everybody. Um, so as, as always, our weekly Thursday is, uh, is about bringing you a special guest to gosh, give you a different uh, insight or some different experiences, how to help you run your business, or in some cases, just life skills and life hacks. Today, we have a very special guest who's going to talk about what, in my opinion, is one of the, if not the most important things that a small business owner should do uh, from the very beginning, uh, before you start outsourcing anything else. Um, and that's to talk about bookkeeping and accounting. So we have um, a specialist in this area. Uh, it's Patty Saggio. Uh, she's a bookkeeper and accountant all the way from way up north in New Jersey. So uh, welcome, <laughs> Patty. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yay. So tell us just a, a quick little bit, kind of what you do and how long you've been doing it and kind of the type of clientele that you like to help. And then we'll, we'll jump into a little more. Cool. So um, my background is accounting. I did go to school for accounting. That's what I have a degree in. And I worked in corporate for about 13 years, uh, different various. I started out in like royalty accounting, fund accounting, and then realized I liked the debits and credits, what I did in school. So I went to general accounting. And then I think fortunately I was diagnosed with ulcer ulcerative colitis um, and kind of had to walk away from corporate America because the environment was just triggering me and it just wasn't worth it. So your health is more important than anything else because without your health, you can't do anything. You're of no value to anybody. So um, because I do love what I do, it kind of made sense for me to transition to doing bookkeeping. With the accounting background, I have that extra step up that extra knowledge that maybe someone who has self-taught themselves bookkeeping um, that I bring to my clients. You know, um, I know how the accountant's terminology, what they are talking about, what they're looking for, the lingo. Um, and that just helps the connection between the client and the accountant. There's less work for the accountants to do because I know how to get everything right in the first place. So we present for you know tax season and it's like, okay, this is good. Maybe we do a journal entry here and there for depreciation. But other than that, there's not a lot of work for the accountants to do once I hand over everything. And it's because I have the background, you know, and, you know, I've been doing it now for over 20 years. So I have the, the experience. Yeah. And I, I think that's the important piece is, you know, people can hire someone to technically do their bookkeeping, right? To right, right. log into some sort of a portal and categorize transactions. Yep. But Obviously, bookkeeping is way more than that. And obviously, having the accounting background to be able to stay on top of things, because most people in anything, they don't know what they don't know. And in particular, right. with bookkeeping and accounting, they're, they're <laughs> probably making lots of mistakes, uh, such as you know clients that we work with. We talk to them about commingling things and how that can be disastrous. Um, you know, missing out on potential tax credits and things that right. they're just not aware of because that's not their wheelhouse. That's not right. what they specialize in. And they're leaving money on the table. They're probably spending money in places that they don't need to. Yep. So I guess maybe give us your top three or four or whatever number is good for you of, I guess the, the best, quickest and easiest for lack of a better explanation of tips for somebody who is going to start a new business or already has one and they're thinking well, maybe I need to explore this some more. Where well one of the things that I see like if I bring on a new client and, and most of the times business owners will start on their own because they don't want to spend the money yep. and I get it but at the same time you're going to wind up spending more money to have someone like me fix it. Right. So it, you know it, it is you know they think they're saving money I can't afford a bookkeeper but in the long run, if you're not filing taxes on time or if you're doing it wrong, the penalties that you're going to get charged surpass anything that I would ever charge you. And you're like, you know, come on, let's be real. Um, so I tell them if they are commingling, make sure you have a separate checking account, savings account, separate credit card. Because, yes, there are times we all do it. You don't have that card or you have cash and you do it. And that's fine. Everybody does it. But you don't want, you know, a majority of the expenses coming through your business being all personal because that's not going to help you. You know, it's not going to be able to be deducted, which is then going to affect your bottom line, which is what you're going to get taxed on. So that's a big thing. Like right off the bat, if you have commingling, separate everything. And then I kind of go through and I look at what their expenses are. And basically, when I start with somebody, I basically just need their credit cards and their bank statements. I can go from there 
and kind of know what they're doing. Right. And this is how we're doing it. This is how you're classifying it. Let's change it. You know, something that, and it's all like client based, but you know, I have a client, he's a landscaper. He wants to know how much he spends in gas every year because we're charging, you know, that's he's driving, he has to drive around to do it where someone else doesn't really care. So we can break it out and I can make it as detailed and drill down as much as the client wants, which is great because then we can do comparisons year to year. How much did you spend in advertising in 2019 compared to 2020? Although 2020 with COVID, everybody's numbers are, are wacky and, and nothing is good, you know? <laughs> Everybody took a loss. So, you know, it's crucial to know where to put everything and how it's going to roll up onto a tax return. So, you know, fine tuning it is really more for the client's knowledge than more for your accountants because, you know, office supplies and all that, everything gets rolled up into one number on your tax return. Yeah. And I think that's a big one that I want to go back to where kind of where you started this is that return on investment. You know, as a business owner at different levels, nobody wants to spend money that they deem right. unnecessary. Um, but the, the reality is, you're, you're going to spend the money or more by not doing it the right yep. way. And, and not to mention the time spent, yep. whether it's daily, weekly, quarterly, or certainly annually for those that, you know, throw everything in a shoebox and want to figure it out at the end of the year. I know, and here's everything. Can exactly. you do a whole year's worth of bookkeeping in a week, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, you know, we obviously we see people uh, on social media and we have lots of conversations <laughs> about the value of bookkeeping and, <laughs> Sorry, we, um, you know, when, when we started our business, obviously I came out of a corporate background as well. And we had a department that handled all that stuff. So right. for me, right. that was just, that was common. That was the common practice is there's a check and balance in place for everything. And here's where I put my receipts. If I spent something and here's how we categorize stuff and then somebody right. checked it. And so when we started our own business, I, I believe we, we may have hired that, well, unfortunately, before we met you. Uh, we, we hired out our firm maybe before we did anything. That, that might have right. been like the day we got our LLC. We hired this company to do all of that because we both recognize that while we have a background and I even went to college to be an accountant. I just chose not to pursue that long. <laughs> I get it very conceptually, but right. that's not where either one of us wants or needs to spend our time. And the reality is with tax laws changing every single year and just there's so many variables that I, I would rather spend the money and have somebody like you professionally do it so that right. we can make sure that nothing gets missed. The good well, and then you also can focus on building your business, you know, doing what you love to do. Let right. me do what I love to do, you know, as yes, I know crazy as that sounds, I really do love it. Yeah. And, and focus on building your business. Why waste the time doing something that you don't love to do? It's a necessity, like you said in the beginning. It's you need you you're gonna have to do it at some point, you know, if you have a business. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I think that really applies to so many aspects of various people's businesses. They try to do it all. And yeah. social media being the other one besides bookkeeping, <laughs> where people think, yeah, oh, I could just post all day, and you're right. like, that is not it. It's yeah. not dog pictures. I mean, it's no. social media. It's the the copywriting. It's web design and obviously bookkeeping and accounting. There's so many things that uh, unfortunately most entrepreneurs when they decide to start a business because they are doing something they love and something that they're good at, whether it's landscaping or opening a pie shop or gosh, the, the list could go on forever. Yeah, yeah. They, don't, they don't realize many times the amount of back office things that right. have to happen. Right. I mean, you don't really right. have a choice. They, they have to right. get done. So right. uh, having someone like you available to outsource and keep it organized and ultimately cause them to make more money because they've lowered their expenses. They found tax credits, which gave yep. them money. And to your point, they get to focus on their, their, uh, their specialty which is doing whatever that is that delivers more profitability. Right. So right. it's a win-win. Well, like you said, you know, most people, you know, I don't think are birthed as an entrepreneur. Like, okay, I'm, I'm 23 years old and I'm going to start a business. They've all maybe come from a job. And like you said, that's all been taken care of by somebody else. So yeah. you don't even think about it when you start, you know, you think, how do I get clients? What I need programs, not right. all the stuff that has to happen behind the scenes in order to make all that work. Yep. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, well, this is now the great time to talk to you, considering, gosh, we're, we're done with 2020, finally. <laughs> uh, do you have any, uh, I guess, some quick tips as uh, the year has come to an end, some things that maybe people need to be thinking about right now, I guess, whether it's professional, but certainly professionally. Well, definitely, if you haven't done anything, do something. And and I tell people if they if they don't have like a software, like I do QuickBooks. I'm a QuickBooks Pro Advisor. Um, I use desktop and online. Then do a spreadsheet. Keep track of it somehow, some way. It's just going to really make your life easier in a year from now. It kind of can be something that you can hand over to your accountant and they can kind of manipulate. But if you don't do anything and don't keep track of it at all, it's just a headache. And you'll never know you know, okay, in June, am I making money? Am I losing money? At least if you have a spreadsheet, you can kind of like, you know, it can calculate it for you and say, okay, you're losing money, you know, that kind of thing. So definitely if you're not doing something, do something. Um, and kind of like budget, you know, like be realistic in what you want to spend, what you want to make. Because, you know, especially look what happened with COVID. A lot of my clients, you know, I was paid to sit on webinars to learn PPC, and I now can offer that to my clients and file it for them. I understand the, the terminology, what you need and all that kind of stuff, but that really hurt a lot of people because no one was prepared for it. No one had anything like, you know, saved in the, you know, for a rainy day kind of thing. And thankfully, they did offer the PPP and people were able to at least maintain some sort of you know, level of business while we're going through this whole thing. That's yeah. a good skill to have to know how to do the PPP because so many people, they say they don't qualify and you're like, wait, how can you not qualify? Like right. somebody right. can file it right. Right. And, and, that, and that's exactly the case. You know, like I did everything for my clients as far as doing all the paperwork because I don't do payroll for my clients. I do that like an outsource, like an ADP or a paycheck not my forte. I don't, the payroll, they change all the time. Not yeah. interested. But hey, I'll, you know, it's worth it to pay somebody else to do what they do best because it's not something that I do. And yeah, you know, learning how to navigate both of those systems or even QuickBooks payroll to run the reports. What do you need? How are we going to do it? You know, what information do we need to provide? And even now with the second round, it's a lot easier to do the application, but you need to know you know, what quarters did you take the loss? What was your payroll? What was this? All this kind of stuff. So that, yeah, these business owners can get some sort of money to stay afloat and, you know, keep paying their people. Yeah. If you just walk in and ask for a loan like that without any documentation, good luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, so many people don't know that loan is even exists that they can no. get it. And I'm like, right. well, if you're upside down because you're paying employees, but you don't have income, you pretty much qualify. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have payroll and you took a loss, which I'm going to say 90% of businesses took a loss at some point in 2020. You can get money, you know, don't know how much it'll be, but Hey, something is better than nothing. Right. Right. Yeah. It's free money. Yeah. Yeah. And even the payback, I mean, most of the stuff will be forgiven if you use it the way you're supposed to use it, you know? Um, right. And even the webinars that I've been on, you know, about the forgiveness of the PPP, they say time is on your side. Like kind of just wait, because maybe all these banks are going to be so overwhelmed with all this paperwork that they're going to be like, you know what? Everybody's forgiven. Just be done. Like that would be the ideal situation because right. it is. It's a lot of stuff to come up with to have it forgiven. But yeah, I mean, you know, you got to do it. You know, it, it, it's just going to help you. Yeah. How much is it going to be worth for them to clear off their desk and delete a bunch of files and, and save time? And file the 2,500 <laughs> people they hired to process PPP right. yeah. applications? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, do you have a, uh, some, maybe I share how people, if they're interested in learning more and, and uh, maybe working with you and how to contact you and that sort of thing? Sure. Um, my website is www.countonpatty with a Y. <laughs> um, on Instagram at count underscore on Patty. So everything is based around that. Um, yeah, I, I'm on Facebook as Patricia Saggio. So, you know, can always send me a message there. But yeah, um, I do offer a 30 minute call. Ask any questions that you have regarding your bookkeeping. If I can help in any way, kind of go through what you have and, and see if we're a fit. And if I can, you know, help you, that would be great. So do you offer some sort of like program or subscription or whatever you want to call it as far as like a monthly or quarterly or 
how do you set your business up? So um, if you like, you hired me to do your monthly bookkeeping, I yeah. do a three month minimum because it's going to take me that long to kind of know. I mean, bookkeeping is bookkeeping. You pay right. bills, you have money coming in, but everybody's business has their own little nuances. And it just, you know, so it gives me enough time to learn how they do stuff, how they want stuff. Are we a good fit? You know, I mean, is this a good relationship, you know, that we want to continue? Um, and then, yeah, after the three months, it's just a month to month, you know, on a month to month basis. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then I also do a, another course, treat, program, whatever, where I will teach you. So say you guys wanted to do it yourself. I could teach you over a six hour period how to use QuickBooks because that's the platform that I use. And then I offer support three months after that. So if any questions or anything that came up after that, I would be here to support you. That's a great one because actually one of my next questions was going to be, what do you recommend for somebody who wants to do it? Is there a, a software free or paid yeah. low cost? But to me, that seems like if you're just right. really dead set on doing it yourself and you need a low cost way into it, number one, you get a free 30 minute session to find out if you're the right fit and you get to work in a six hour session to learn how to use it with follow-up support. Uh, that alone is, uh, is worth jumping on a call with you in my opinion. Yeah, because I mean, I've seen, you know, basic QuickBooks or intro to QuickBooks, you know, it's like the community colleges when they could do everything. You're paying $95 for a two hour class and you're supposed to walk out understanding QuickBooks. I mean, oh, on, really? two hours to set up QuickBooks to even enter a number in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for all you people watching and listening, we highly recommend that you reach out to Patty. If you didn't take down her information, we'll make sure it gets dropped in the comments below. Or worst case, if you don't want to use that, DM Hillary or myself and we'll uh, <laughs> get in contact. We'll make sure it happens. Well, thanks so much for coming on today. It was nice to talk to you. Yes, thanks for having me. It was great fun. Appreciate it. We had a good time. Try to stay warm up there as best you can. Okay, I will. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for coming on. Have a good night. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.